Bees sometimes get a bad reputation for their tendency to sting people, but they're actually really cool. They play an important role in their ecosystem as pollinators. Additionally, without bees, there would be no honey. In 2015 alone, 158 million tons of honey were produced in the U.S., and bees are the chemists behind it all. They convert nectar from flowering plants into the sweet substance. But what is all the buzz about honey, and how do bees drive its formation? Today, we are going to discuss the organic chemistry of honey, which includes the reactions that produce honey and its unique chemical properties. First, we'll provide a general understanding of how honey is made. Some of the bees in a colony, called forager bees, obtain nectar from flowering plants and store it inside of them, in their crop or honey stomach. They return to the colony and transfer the nectar to house bees, who regurgitate several times over about 20 minutes. During this time, enzymes produced by the bees catalyze the production of honey in the honey stomach. The final product is then used as food to raise the young members of the colony or is harvested by humans to end up in our stores and homes. So what are the chemical mechanisms that turn nectar into a delicious treat? Every nectar is different, but most species of nectar contain sucrose as the primary sugar. One of the first steps in the honey-making process is the conversion of complex sugars, like sucrose, into the more simple sugars of glucose and fructose. The hydrolysis of sucrose takes place very slowly under normal conditions, so bees use an enzyme called invertase to expedite the process. This enzyme is added to the nectar as the bees collect it and store it in their crops. The sucrose is broken down into a one-to-one -one mixture of glucose and fructose called invert sugar. The name for invert sugar comes from its ability to rotate plain polarized light in the opposite direction of sucrose, thus inverting the light. This mixture is sweeter, sweeter than pure sucrose and is the basis for honey. Now we will show the basic steps for the hydrolysis of sucrose. The invertase for this mechanism acts as a catalyst. Enzymes contain active sites that bind to substrates, in this case the sucrose, and reduce activation energy by binding to the substrate in such a way that the reaction occurs more easily. The reactive site of this process is the oxygen connecting the two monosaccharides in what is known as the glycosidic linkage, shown in blue. The carbon on the six-membered ring that is part of the acetal is called the anomeric carbon. Notice that there is also another acetal carbon in the five-membered ring. The process begins with the addition of a proton to the center oxygen shown in red. This creates a good leaving group, which allows for the bond between oxygen and the five-membered ring to break. The result is a molecule of glucose and a carbocation. The hydroxide from water can now attack the carbocation to form fructose. Notice that the result of this reaction is an equal amount of the two sugars. Another important reaction in the production of honey is the converting of glucose into gluconic acid through the use of a separate catalyst called glucose oxidase. This process produces hydrogen peroxide as a byproduct. The gluconic acid produced is the main chemical responsible for the acidity of honey. The combination of the acidic environment, a small amount of hydrogen peroxide, and a very low water content is what prevents the honey from spoiling. The process for the production of gluconic acid begins with a molecule of glucose and the glucose oxidase enzyme. Glucose oxidase is paired with molecules of flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. FAD is capable of accepting two protons and two electron runs to form FADH2, as shown by the red hydrogens. In the process of converting glucose to gluconic acid, FAD acts as the initial electron acceptor before passing the electrons to molecular oxygen in the air. The enzyme is stereoselective and will only interact with beta-glucose. When it does interact, it facilitates the transfer of two hydrogen atoms and two electrons to FAD, one from the anomeric carbon and another from the hydroxyl group in the anomeric carbon, which are indicated in red. This forms an ester called D-glucano-delta-lactone. The hydrogen and electrons that move to the FAD are then transferred to oxygen to form hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide can be converted into water and oxygen through the use of catalase enzyme. Once the D-glucano-delta-lactone is formed, it can be converted into the carboxylic acid, gluconic acid, through the addition of water. This will break the ester of the D-glucano-delta-lactone to form an alcohol and a carboxylic acid.
Another interesting aspect of honey is that you can determine where it came from based on its chemical makeup. There are a few different methods for doing this, but the ones we will talk about today are using amino acids and using volatile organic compounds. These methods use floral markers to find what plants the honey was around when it was turned into honey. The first method is amino acids. A study in Argentina found that when examining honey from three different regions in Argentina, they all had different levels of amino acids. Because of their knowledge of the flora of those regions, they were able to determine which samples of honey came from each different region. This method does only work if you know the floral makeup of the region, as the flora is what contributes to the amino acid levels in honey. Because of this, it doesn't directly tell you where they came from geographically. The second method is by examining the honey's volatile organic compounds. These include things such as alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, acids, terpenes, hydrocarbons, benzene, and furan deriv derivatives. These different compounds represent a fingerprint of honey, and although they are not present in high concentrations, they are directly responsible for things such as the aroma and even the taste of the honey. The volatile compounds can change the price of honey because of these characteristics. These are also influenced by the flora the honey is around when it is formed as well as the nectar. Because of this, they can be used to trace the honey back to its origin. However, there are other ways that VOCs can be altered in honey, including the extraction technique used to retrieve it. Because of this, they are not a perfect method for locating the origin of honey. An example of this is Manuka honey. Manuka honey is originally from New Zealand, but it is wanted all around the world. The reason for this is the plants that it is around when it is formed, specifically the Manuka plant. The Manuka flowers contain dihydroxyacetone, and this is very important for the honey. Because of this, the honey has a higher concentration of methyl glyoxyl. This is what people think gives it the antibacterial properties that make it so desired. However, Manuka honey is still an alternative medicine, and we aren't really sure how effective it is. We do, however, know that it is unique because of where it comes from. One of the things honey is known for is the fact that it doesn't ever spoil. This is interesting because when inspecting the components in honey, there isn't one thing that stands out causing it to be imperishable. There are actually four main reasons that work together, creating honey's hostile environment to microbes. The first is the low moisture content, of only about 17% water. This is not ideal for many bacteria as they usually thrive in wet places. The second is the high viscosity of honey. This is derived from it being a super saturated solution of sugars. The high viscosity makes it difficult for anything to move around in the honey. The last two factors are in the products of the reaction that breaks down the glucose. When a small amount of glucose is broken down, both hydrogen peroxide and gluconic acid are formed. Hydrogen peroxide is a known antiseptic, working to prevent bacterial growth. The gluconic acid is what is believed to be the main contributor to the honey's acidity, which many microbes cannot tolerate. Although honey does not taste acidic because of the high sugar content, the average pH of honey is about 3.9. It contains many different acids, including the ones shown here, with the most important being gluconic acid. With a pKa of 3.7, Gluconic acid is the strongest of the acids found in honey, and the main reason honey has such a low pH. It is a carboxylic acid with six total OH groups. Another interesting thing about honey is how it freezes. As it is cooled, it begins to appear solid at around negative 20 degrees Celsius. However, it is actually just becoming more viscous as the temperature decreases. Honey acts as an amorphous polymer, meaning the molecules do not arrange in an orderly state. At negative 42 to negative 51 degrees Celsius, honey reaches its glass transition temperature. A glass transition temperature is similar to a phase change that occurs in an anamorphous polymers. The graph shows the main similarities and differences between the melting point and the glass transition. Both have a change in heat capacity, but only the melting point involves the latent heat of melting. The interesting thing about the glass transition temperature is that once the temperature drops below that point, the polymer becomes very brittle. Like the name says, it acts like glass, shattering in a similar way if dropped. Now you know all about the chemistry behind honey. So next time you enjoy any food containing honey, you can appreciate the mechanisms that lead to its unique and delicious properties.